What's up, what's up, what's what up? What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to your favorite story time with your messy ass. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm really excited to tell you guys about the story because it just happened. And like, I feel like there's nothing better than the freshest of teas. And I couldn't help but bring it to my besties and get your thoughts on it. Father's Day is right around the corner. I want you guys to be prepared. And if you guys don't have anything in mind to give your dad, you really don't know where to start. For me, it's my brother. He's like my father figure. The person that is your protector it could even be your mom so I'm gonna take you guys on a little errand with me today and it's just gonna be super super quick because I've been wanting to do this for months and months and months and I figured why not for Father's Day Actually want to take a moment to thank fixed for partnering with me on this video and this story and just supporting my platform one of our amazing glamazons actually works for this company highly 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 recommend them and here's why so I'm gonna show you guys in real time how to install this it's just a few simple steps but essentially this runs a diagnostic on your car any vehicle that you plug it into you plug this into your OBD2 port this scans for over 7,000 check engine light issues so it'll be able to hone in on the problem but not only that you guys it'll track your maintenance schedule for your car whenever you need oil changes tire rotation windshield wiper fluid things like that but if you ever come across a check engine light you can run a diagnostic on your phone within seconds another reason why I am gifting this to David for Father's Day this year is also because our oldest son is literally less than a year away from learning how to drive we're actually already teaching him the basics and fixed is perfect if you have a teenager that is about to start driving and you're shopping for cars like most of us they're gonna get a used car you can take fixed anywhere with you you can plug this into any car that you are test driving for your teenager or for yourself it'll tell you about any accidents that the car has been it'll it'll give you a rundown on whether or not this car needs any maintenance if it needs any repairs all of those good things that are good to know before you purchase fixed has 10,000 five-star reviews they are doing something right typically speaking something like fixed would cost around 50 to 60 bucks but if you guys are interested in getting this for yourself your father figure as a gift for someone in your life definitely check out my link down below you can get this bad boy for $19.99 plus free shipping okay I think that this is a brilliant concept I think that it's going to keep a lot of people safe on the road thank you again to fix for partnering with me on this video and supporting my content please show them some love check out the link in my description and take advantage of this sale for $19.99 plus free shipping to make sure that you and your family are safe on these roads girl but without further ado let's get into the story time so like I said, this happened just a few, two, three days ago. If you guys are following me on my Instagram, here it is. If you guys want to have a little bit of tea on the side. I showed you guys that I took my kids to Elitch Gardens here in Denver. This took place that day, earlier that morning, okay? My mom texted me and she said, hey, I'm not feeling too well. She actually had an injury on her foot. She wasn't able to really walk around her apartment and she had a lot of boxes from shipments. We're actually planning for my brother's baby shower. We've been ordering a shit ton of stuff, right? So she has a bunch of boxes in her apartment and because she's in so much pain, she texts me and she was like, hey mija, I know you're gonna be taking the kids to Elitch's. She lives near downtown. She was like, beforehand, would you mind like letting mijo come over here? Mijo meaning Julian. And she was like, um, I will pay him some money to come take out this recycling for me that way he has spending money at Elitch's when you guys go Julian has been doing some side jobs over the summer trying to save some money so he was so down for it so she texts me and she texts Julian so Julian came to me and was like mom can I stop by grandma's house and go help her out make this money and you know make sure she's fine and I was like yeah baby that's fine you get all the kids packed up okay it's the whole thing you got to get snacks you got to get juice you got to get the stuffed animals you got to make sure they're not kicking out their shoes we take off we start driving towards my mom house we finally get there now before we went to Elitch's I wanted to feed the kids lunch that way I don't have cranky babies trying to go to the amusement park right so I told my mom I was like hey mommy I'm gonna drop off Julian he'll do the recycling and while I do that I'm gonna go get food so she 
texted me back and she was like, oh, mija, like I was really hoping to see the babies. So, you know, I felt bad. Like she really couldn't like come out or come see them because her foot was hurting so bad. So I did. I unbuckled the babies. I got them both inside my mom's apartment. I said hello to my mom. I got her order. She agreed to watch the babies while we went down the street to go get food, okay? We were going to Raisin Cane. Meanwhile, amongst all of this, David talks to me that morning and was like, hey babe, I'm gonna need some time in the middle of the day while we're out to take a phone call. It's really important. He's working on this project with some of his friends. It's like, it's a filming project. So it was super important that he was on this call and it was gonna be taking place that one. So he had told me that. So we were kind of running up against the clock. I dropped off the kids at my mom's. Julian was taking care of the recycling. My mom was just taking care of the babies and me and David take off to Raisin Cane's, which is literally right around the corner. Take off, we go to Raisin Cane's. I order everybody's food. Um, we're probably out for like 10, 15 minutes and we head back. We're literally right around the corner and I park on the side of my mom building one o'clock comes around and David was like oh shit I have to take this call so I was like of course babe of course so he gets on this phone call I go through all of the food you know I give him his food napkins his drinks and he's gonna stay in the Jeep having this phone call while I go inside and give my mom her food and the kids and get everyone fed and Julian can finish his job okay so David stays in the Jeep I go inside this building. Now, my mom's building is very secure in the sense that it has two doors, one from the outside and then there's an area where you can be buzzed in and then you can get into the next set of doors. Now, strangely enough, as I'm walking to the front doors of my mom's apartment, I get a FaceTime call from my mom. And so I try to answer it, but the call drops. So I'm like, no big deal, I'm literally here at the building, so fine. I go into the main entrance, I buzz, her number, she buzzes me into the building. I head to the elevator and I go up to her floor. So I'm sitting in the elevator with like three bags of food and I get to my mom's floor and as soon as the doors open, I see two older ladies standing directly in front of the elevator and I'm like, oh my God, excuse me, sorry. And my mom's apartment is literally right across the hall from the elevator. So I go in between these two ladies and all of a sudden my mom's door flies open and she's coming out and she's like, thank God you're here I gotta go handle something and I'm like what is going on so I'm looking at my mom and I'm like what's happening she is getting into the elevator that I just got off of with those two ladies and she was like they're messing with Julian they're questioning Julian I need to go downstairs and I need to help him they're not letting him leave and I was like whoa and she was like stay here with the babies boom the elevator door shuts girl I'm sitting here like this what oh so I'm trying to process all this and I was like keeping Julian what the hell? So I go inside, I drop all of the food on the counter and I immediately pull out my phone and I call my son. I FaceTime him, he answers and he looks all freaked out. He's standing in the sun, he's in the middle of the parking lot and I'm like, baby, what happened? And I can hear talking from a man like beside him that's trying to like talk to him and he's like trying to talk to me and I'm like, baby, I just need you to focus on me tell me what happened he's kind of nervous and he's like mom I don't know what happened he was like I was out here you know trying to put the recycle away for grandma and he was like this man came up to me and started asking me questions and like accusing me of doing things that I wasn't doing and I was like what do you mean he asked me what I was doing I told him that I was throwing away recycling for my grandma um, he asked me if I lived here and I said no my grandma does and then that man was like well what's your grandma's name where does she live? What unit number is her? Like what, what apartment number is hers? Julian doesn't give out that information. Like there's no reason. He just didn't feel comfortable with like giving out where my, my mom lives. She lives by herself and like, no, I'm not answering those questions for you. This man takes it upon himself to question my son and start pushing him even further and saying, you don't live here and your grandma doesn't either because I live here and I know everybody that lives here and I've never seen you and like I know everybody and you can't even tell me who your grandma is and you're illegally dumping and like you're just not supposed to be here. So then this man starts demanding my son to call his grandma. He's like, fine, get her on the phone, get her on the phone, get her on the phone. So Julian ends up FaceTiming my mom. I'm coming back from Raisin Cane's at this point when this is happening and Julian's FaceTiming my mother. Finally, after being prodded and prodded, this man asking him over and over and over and over and over and not leaving him alone, Julian was like, fine, I'll call my grandma. So he gets on his phone and he FaceTimes my mom. There's my mom on the couch, icing her foot and she's like, hey mijo, what's going on? So Julian gives her the lowdown and was like, hey grandma, I'm out here, I'm trying to get rid of your recycle. There's this 
this man. He's saying that I'm not supposed to be here. He doesn't believe that you live here. And so my mom was like, turn the phone around. So Julian does, and she's looking at this man. And she was like, can I help you? And he was like, your grandson is out here illegally dumping. And she goes, no, he's not. He's my, like, that is my recycle. And I live here. Y'all, yeah. so this man decides to take it up with my mama and call my mother a liar. And he was like, you don't live here. No, you don't. You don't live here. I know you don't live here because I know everybody da 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 right? My mom was like, sir, I'm going to need you to leave my grandson alone. I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you. I don't know you. My mom gave him her name. She gave him her apartment number. And he was like, no, 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 you don't, you don't live here. You don't live here. Come out here right now. He's not leaving until you come out here right now. So... By the time I got upstairs, I got off that elevator, my mom was hanging up with Julian and heading downstairs to confront this man. Meanwhile, I have no idea. So I'm sitting on FaceTime with Julian, hearing all of this and like getting updated. And he was like, yeah, so grandma's on her way now. Beach, all of a sudden, I hear this man start yelling, telling my mom, get your butt over here. Get over here right now. He's talking to my mother this way, okay? Uh, I hear my mom, and I look at Julian. I said, mijito, turn the camera around. I need to make sure that grandma's safe. I need to know what's going on. So Julian turns the camera around, and I see this older man standing right next to the recycle bin, and then I see my mom coming up, and he starts telling her to get her butt over here. Like, come talk to him right now. By being hella demanding, right? So my mom looked at him and she goes, uh-uh, you're not going to be talking to me that way. I don't know who you think you are. I live here. And this man looked at her and he said, you shut up and you listen to me. That's about where my mom lost her composure. She was like, uh-uh, you do not tell me to shut up. You don't ever say shut up to me ever again in your life. She was like, what you are doing, this is a minor. Do you understand? This is my grandson. You don't have any right to be holding him here while he answers your questions as though you're a person of authority, sir. He don't know you. She was like, I'm not gonna keep having this conversation with you. Like, I live here. And he straight up was going back and forth with her. And she was like, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. And she goes, I have the keys. Look down at her keys and then bitch this man flipped so fast the minute that he got verification that she was a resident there at this building then then he tries to act like oh he was just trying to be a good samaritan and he was just trying to help my son and he said ma'am ma'am you're not letting me have a word in edgewise you're not letting me talk and my mom was like because you're on some bullshit and you're over here talking to my grandson crazy and keeping him here and having me come all the way out my apartment like what you mean and he was like no no you're misunderstanding i was just trying to tell him that this container was full and there's another one in the middle of the parking lot that he could use julian turned the phone back around and he goes mom he never said that to me like, baby i believe you i could tell by this man's demeanor he was not there to help my son out or help you know tell him that there was another bin and like don't be struggling over here son there's another one over there no 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 that was not what this was but the minute that my mom verified who she was and the fact that she was a resident that's what he tried to say so at this point, my mom's like, no, she looks at Julian. She goes, finish what you're doing, mijito. This man ain't nobody. Finish what you're doing. My mom had broken down all the boxes and she put them in this little wagon. She uses it for her groceries, right? So he empties out the wagon full of cardboard boxes and he finishes doing that. Meanwhile, my mom and this man are kind of going back and forth. Mom looked at this man and says, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and report you to the president of the HOA because my mom knows her. And she was like, because this is inappropriate. The minute that my mom mentioned that she was going to get the president of the HOA involved, he skedaddled. And I mean fast. Mom comes limping back in. Her blood pressure is high. I'm sitting her down. I'm trying to get her to eat or like at least drink something because when she gets really upset, it really affects her. It can affect her blood pressure. Like, you know, she just has some other health issues that I, I'm concerned about when she gets upset like that. So uh, my first course of action was to make sure that she was stable and that you know her health was okay Once julian was in the apartment i talked to my son again and he told me everything from top to bottom and he was so upset so confused he was upset that that man had talked to his grandma that way he was upset that that man was talking to him all kinds of crazy for those of y'all that know me and know julian it's julian 
He is the most kind-hearted, sweet-hearted, soft, like calm. He's a very calm person. And so I could tell that with my son being as upset as he was, it was because that man really was talking to him crazy. And really, he was telling me like he was talking to me real mean, mom. Like I was vandalizing or something like that's how he was talking to me. He threatened to call the police on me. And I was like, oh, hell no. So the more that my mom and, and Julian are telling me, the more upset I'm getting because this is my kid now keep in mind as this is all happening my husband is out in the parking lot on the side of the building having his phone call eating his lunch so he don't even know what the hell is going on right within the first five minutes that my mom came back from downstairs dealing with this man she did she kept true to her word and she got a hold of her friend who was the president of the hoa there and she told her everything over the phone and was like this is what this man did this is inappropriate da 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 right my mom has been living in this area for a little over a year and I am kind of considered her caregiver because, you know, I drop off things for her. I have things delivered for her. You know, I help her, my kids help her, my husband helps her whenever she needs anything because, you know, she can't do everything by herself. With that being said, we are at her property often. Not exaggerating when I tell you every single time we walk into this building, all of us, okay? I got my husband, I got myself, my kids always stopped in the hallway who are you who are you visiting where are you going what floor does she live on all of these plethora of questions and we're literally bombarded every single time and that's the first issue okay we were made to feel uncomfortable we're constantly having to verify our identity even though we got buzzed in by our mom the residents there feel the need to question us some more outside of the elevators and if we don't answer their questions they get onto the elevator with us and they will follow us to the floor and my mom's apartment to see where we're going they need to know they need to know they need to know the second issue is my children okay they have a tendency of being very very intrigued by my kids especially the babies Ezra and Mila but more specifically Ezra okay and I'm gonna give you guys a few examples so first things first my mom's neighbor they have this huge balcony it's huge okay but there's like this barrier that separates hers and her neighbors uh, but it's all on one on slab of concrete does that make sense so my mom utilizes that space that has very high edges I mean super super high so my mom uses that space to take my kids out there they play with chalk they play with water guns bubbles you know like that's where they have their little outside toys there's a small little barrier between mom's patio and her neighbor's patio and again, this is not an exaggeration because I've been there when this happens because I wanted to see if my mom was exaggerating. Single time that my children step foot to their grandma's patio, this lady comes out, she starts staring at my kids and she makes her way to the fence and she starts talking to my son, Ezra, and just Ezra, not Mila, not Julian, just Ezra. And that fine, you know, you want to talk to the kids, you know, you're intrigued by toddlers, you think they're cute, that's fine. Then it started progressing and she started reaching her hand over the gate, touching on Ezra and his hair and his ears and his clothes and rubbing his back. Ah, uh -uh. I don't play that. I don't play that. I don't play that. I do not play that. Okay. And I thought that my mom kept telling me over and over, I had to bring the kids in my crazy neighbor be coming out and she'd be trying to touch on the kids, especially Ezra. And so fine, you know, I go over there. I see this happened as well. Okay. Fast forward, one day comes around and my mom was babysitting the babies for us and David went over there to go pick them up. As they were standing outside of my mom's apartment and they're waiting for the elevator, my mom still has her apartment door open like while she's, you know, talking to David and saying bye to the kids. And all of a sudden, Ezra just kind of beelines it down one of the hallways and he thought it was funny and like, chase me, daddy, chase me. Same neighbor. Here's the kids out there in the hallway and she opens her apartment door. And so when Ezra starts like, chase me, daddy, chase me. And he's running down the hallway, literally looks at my son and she goes, you can come in here. Come on, come in here. And this lady has my son come inside of her apartment. Y'all, at this point, my mom is like over it. So my mom hops out of her apartment and goes right next door and is like, ah, 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 ah. 
And she like looks at this lady like, why are you telling my grandson to come in here? So she grabs Ezra. She's like, no, no, no. Like we don't go into strangers apartments. Let's go, let's go. And this lady is like telling my mom over and over like, I'm not a stranger. Like I'm not gonna hurt him. I'm not gonna do anything to him. And my mom didn't say anything to her. It's very simple. She did not want my son in there. She brought my son out. But this lady straight up looked at Ezra and was like, come here and like, come on in. I am over it. I'm up to here, okay? Now it's involving all of my kids, myself, my husband are being questioned every time we come here. But like the minute you start messing with my kids, I'm over it, okay? So mom's on the phone with the president. And I'm getting all of this information from Julian. Sudden, I hear my mom say, yeah, we can be down there in five minutes. I'll meet you down there. Oh, we fighting? We fight in fantastical because I'm tired of these people here in this building just doing whatever they want to do to my kids just because they're here and I'm entrusting my mom to watch them while I'm working and handling my fucking business and these people are just doing whatever the fuck they want to do with my kids like no we're going to have a conversation. My mom gets off the phone and she was like hey that was the president. Um, she knows exactly who that man is because my mom filmed it and my mom sent the recording to HOA president and that lady was like, oh yeah, I know exactly who he is. I know exactly what apartment number he's in and I'm going to get a hold of him and tell him to meet us in the community room in five minutes to discuss what happened. Let's do it. We need to have a little conversation, a little discussion pool. I have not felt this riled up since high school, girl. Like I was so ready. You don't come after my kids. Julian, hey, keep an eye on your brother and sister. I'm gonna text your dad right now and tell him to come up so that he can help you watch the kids while me and grandma go handle this with this man. And Julian said, okay, mom, I got it. So my mom and I are waiting for the elevator. I text David and I just keep it very vague. And I said, hey, Something happened, um, don't worry about it. Like I, I have it handled. Julian's with the babies. Can you please go up there as soon as possible, you know, to help him watch the kids while I handle this. I'll explain everything to you later. I just really did not want to interrupt this super important call that he was on. And he texted me right back and he was like, no, I'm on my way in. So we go down the elevator, we go onto the first floor where the community room is, and I see my husband coming into the main area, coming into the front doors, and he's taking his headphones out and he was like what happened right so as we're walking to the community room i'm updating my husband on everything and i was like this is what this man did julian's out in the back um he wouldn't let julian leave like he was questioning him he had him call my my mom and then question my mom and had my mom come all the way down there david's sitting there like listening to this entire story and he was like what and i was like yeah why was he questioning julian what was julian doing and i was like he was throwing away the recycle. So it's a huge parking lot and they have covered parking back there and all the way in the back corner, that's where like the recycle huge bin is. So, you know, I told David, I was like, he wasn't doing anything he wasn't supposed to. He was putting recyclable material into a recycle bin. And all of a sudden this man approached him and did that in the third, right? Fast forward, the president of the HOA enters the room. I'm pacing back and forth because I'm pissed. I greet her and I said, hi, how are you? Good afternoon. She looks at me, just she completely ignores me, okay? And I was like, or not, that's fine. She proceeds to have a conversation with my mom. Her and my mom know each other and that rubbed me the fucking wrong way. I did not appreciate that. So then she proceeds to be like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened, you know? And so she starts apologizing to my mom. And you know, I'm so sorry that this happened. Like, I don't understand. We usually don't have occurrences like this. Kind of trying to insinuate that this cannot really be what my mom said it was because this never happens type of shit. So my mom was like, look, you know, we're gonna have this discussion, whatever. But finally, this man comes in to the room and he's there with his wife. We all have a greeting. It's very awkward. There's two couches facing each other. There's David, myself, my mom on one couch, and there's him and his wife and then the president is at the head of the room, okay? We're sitting across from each other and there are no pleasantries with me. I don't feel like being pleasant. I am not happy to be here. I don't, I'm don't. i not happy about their circumstances. I'm not happy about what my son had to endure. I'm not happy about this man talking to my minor child. I'm not happy with the way he was talking to my son. I'm not happy with the way he was talking to my mom. I am not 
happy. We start this conversation and this man starts trying to, you know, defend himself first and foremost. And I was like, with all due respect, we're going to start at the very beginning. So I laid everything out as the storyteller I am. All right, let me give you the timeline. I said, my mother is having some health issues right now. And as you can see, her foot, she's having an issue physically where she cannot put all of her weight on that foot. So we're having to, you know, take care of a few things for her around her home to ensure that she's comfortable. I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm doing little jabs here and there. I hope that this meeting doesn't take too long as I do have prior engagements for this afternoon that I'd like to get to with my kids. Now, seeing as this is an unforeseen circumstance that we have to handle, I hope that we can handle it promptly, rectify the situation as quickly as possible. We're on our way to a family event and my son specifically wanted to stop here to help his grandmother. I said that was specifically what he was here for, okay? Um, I said, now when my son minded his business and went and took his grandma's recycle out to his grandma's recycle bin at his grandma's apartments, you proceed, and at this point I am referring to him and I am, you know, talking, speaking directly to him. I said, you decide that it's appropriate to approach my minor son and begin to question him about his identity, correct? Well, yes, yes, uh, yes, well, and if I could explain, I said, well, in a minute, I said, I just wanted to know if that was correct. I said, at which point, my son was not comfortable with answering your very personal questions about him, his grandma, her address. I said, as you can imagine, we don't allow our children to give personal and private information to strangers. So he proceeds to not answer. He He's trying to do what he's there to do. You saw a wagon full of nothing but cardboard and he's putting it into a recyclable bin, correct? You spoke to him as though he was a second class citizen. You did not believe him. You did not give him the benefit of the doubt, even though you did not see him committing a crime. He wasn't vandalizing anything he wasn't loitering he wasn't doing drugs he wasn't putting it he wasn't just unloading a bunch of trash and like you know just like stealing things out of the back he was not it's displaying any sort of criminal activity but you still felt behooved to go to my son and begin questioning him while he's by himself and then you have my injured mother calm down to prove to you that she lives here and has lived here for over a year now, sir, because you believe that you have the authority to do that. And I looked at his wife and I said, you do understand that there is an issue with your husband harassing a minor, correct? Well, yes, but like, you know, it truly is for our safety. So then he looks at me and he goes, my turn, my turn. And I said, absolutely, you have the floor. He tries to paint this situation so different than what it actually was. He, he says that he saw my son struggling with empty, broken down boxes, struggling, okay? He's 14 and strong as hell, struggling. Okay, he saw my son struggling at the bin and he said oh i just noticed that that bin was close to being full and i was just trying to tell him that there was an empty one and the other on the other side of the parking lot that he could use and it wasn't as full as this one so my mom pipes in and she goes if that was really the truth then why didn't you tell me that when i was on facetime with you after you had my grandson call me to verify that i lived here why didn't you start off with that? Why didn't you just say, there's an, I just saw that your grandson was struggling with this bin. There's another one across the parking lot. That's all I wanted to tell him. She said, that's not what you said. Straight up, as soon as my mom started calling him out on his bullshit, he sat, he like gets on the edge of his seat and he was like, no, no, that's not how it happened. And legitimately, I sat there and I was like, you're extremely reactive. And I looked at his wife and his wife is like looking at him like, stop. And y'all, it's like, when somebody that has a really bad anger issue, when they are put in this position where they're trying to save face, it doesn't always last. There's like little moments of like a peekaboo where you can actually see like their, their anger, like it'll kind of like peek itself out every few moments. And he kept having, I could literally physically see himself having to reset and like 
calm himself down because he kept trying to like lose his temper there during this meeting and like he was really struggling to restrain himself my son is 14 years old he hasn't even stepped foot in a high school he is very young i said i know he's tall everybody thinks he's 16 he's not he's 14 does not have a criminal history is not even from the hood okay he did not deserve to be treated that way so we're having this conversation and i look over and i see my husband and this entire time, David has been very quiet. But when I tell you, he has his sights on that man. Then it started making sense why this man was behaving so, he was like nervous because my husband was staring a hole into him, not saying a word. Instinctively, I put my hand on David's leg because I could feel that my husband was fuming. I don't feel like going back and forth. I said, I'm a very direct person and I'm gonna call a spade a spade. I said, the reason why you stopped my son out in that parking lot was because you saw a tall, curly-headed Mexican kid in your parking lot at your place of residence and you immediately thought that he was up to no good based on his looks, okay? Then you tell him that he can't go anywhere until he calls his grandma. That was my issue with this man because he, he literally told my mom on FaceTime, he's not going anywhere until you get down here. And there's my son. My son is very kind. Any other teenager, that, fuck out of here, I'm leaving. But my son, no, he was trying to be respectful to this older man, so he stayed. And I know my son, he's not just gonna dip out like that. He was raised right. So he's got my son literally standing in the heat while this man is trying to play detective over a situation that doesn't need it. Simply because my son was out there by himself and he's a teenage boy and he did not want to accept that my son wasn't doing anything wrong. So I'm in the middle of saying this and then all of a sudden, for the first time in the entire meeting, my husband speaks up and he leans forward and he looks at this man and he said, so let me ask you this. When you told my son that he couldn't leave, what would you have done to him if he tried? Y'all, this man went pale. Nothing, I mean, I wouldn't have done anything to him. You're absolutely right. And I'm gonna let you know right now that you're very lucky that I was in the middle of a call at that moment because had I walked up on you questioning my son by himself, you and I would not be having this conversation right now. It would have ended very differently for you. Bitch, I got the chills. I got the goosebumps. I Literally everybody in the room was like, my son doesn't have any obligation to answer any of your questions at any time. All of a sudden his wife pops up and she goes, that's true. He's not obligated. Ever happens to my son again me and you are going to have a conversation and I will be getting the police involved. You owe myself, my wife, and my mother-in-law an apology for the way that you spoke to them, for the way that you tried to keep my son, and for your inappropriate behavior. It's crazy to see the dynamic between when, as a woman, you know, my, myself and my mom are sitting in this room and we're holding this man accountable and he's just very defensive and coming up with excuses and my turn, my turn, you know? But the minute that another man is involved and laying down boundaries and letting him know what's what and saying you will not and you owe us an apology now, there's something about a father, there's something about a father, that man completely retreated. I owe y'all an apology and I'm very sorry. I'm sorry for questioning your son. I'm sorry for holding him out there. I'm sorry for speaking to you that way, Mrs. So-and-so. I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't know what I thought. I just, I just thought that, you know, I, I didn't recognize him and I didn't know that y'all taught him that he wasn't supposed to answer questions. The HOA president begins to take over this meeting and we start talking about the fact that it isn't just this situation. This was the worst part of it, okay? But the fact that every time we step into this building, we're questioned, where are y'all from? Who are y'all seeing? Where are y'all going? What apartment number? All of that, every single time, it becomes a bit much. So we start discussing this with the president of the HOA. Now, unbeknownst to me, bitch, this man 
that did that to Julian, his wife is the ex president of the HOA. She just stepped down like a few months ago. So you could tell she is very disappointed and embarrassed that her husband was even involved in this because she used to be the president of the HOA. When my mom first moved into this building, this other lady was the president of the HOA. And my mom has spoken to her before about you know, residents stopping us in the hallway and questioning us. But not only that, they would stop my mom's delivery guys, like for her water, her groceries, medications. Um, they would stop them in the hallways and tell them that they're not allowed to be in there and literally like run off the delivery guys and have my mom's stuff just in the lobby because they didn't want people in the hallways or whatever. So my mom had, you know, reported this as an issue. So we start talking about that and all of a sudden, there's like this pushback with the current president. Okay, we're gonna call her Lisa. And everything that we're saying, like, you know, every time we walk in here with question, she was like, well, that's normal. Like that's for our safety. You know, I, I have done that as well. You know, if I see somebody that I don't recognize, you know, I do, I ask them those questions. And all of a sudden, bitch, the ex HOA lady and the new HOA president start like going at it. Like they start going back and forth because the old president is like, you can't do that. Like you cannot just be questioning guests when they come into the building. Like if they've been buzzed in, they've been identified. The new president was like, well, like it's for our safety. And like, you know, we've had some, you know, questionable things happen on the property. So yeah, you know, if I don't recognize you, uh, I'm gonna ask you like, where are you going? Who are you seeing? Da -da -da. And so like, it kind of gets a little awkward. I'm like looking at Lisa sideways. Like, I know you don't think that this is appropriate, right? So she keeps using the safety thing, safety, safety. And I was like, hey, I don't know how much of a threat we are when we're traveling as a family and we have three children with us. Like, obviously we're not there to cause any harm. And she was like, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Like I could see that. The frequency in which we visit here, like I just don't think it's appropriate that every single time we are questioned to the core about who we are and where we're going and all that. I was like, so you do understand that that's an issue, right? And this needs to stop because then your residents, and I clearly looked at this man, I said, then your residents get it in their mind that they have the authority to question people, even if they are minors, and then we're in the position that we're in now. Start talking to her about my concerns when it comes to my mom's neighbor coaxing my son into her apartment, touching him over the fence. She tries to tell me. Well, she's just old. Old people are like that, you know? I hate that excuse so much. I hate it so much because I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this with my whole chest, okay? Because I believe it 100%. There is no age limit to perversion. There is no age limit to a pedophile. They don't just like get old and say, oh, I don't like that no more. Oh, I'm not like, I don't know what kind of life this lady lived. I don't know what kind of life this man lived. I don't, I don't trust nobody. And at the end of the day, at the end of my mom with the night, if I say, do not touch my children, that is what I said. I don't need to explain nothing to you. I don't need to hear, oh, well, they're just, oh, well, they're old ass. Better remember not to touch my kids because I said no. I don't know you. This is some Hansel and Gretel type of bullshit. I don't know you. I don't know why people be trying to use age. Oh, she's just old. Okay, well, if she's old and see now and she can't remember to respect boundaries, maybe her ass should be living in assisted living. I don't know. But like, I'm not going to keep repeating myself, ma'am. If they keep touching my kids, we're going to have a problem because I don't know them like that. It's COVID. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. But at the end of the day, if I just said no, it's no. If I said no, it's no. I don't understand. Bitch, that, that's where I want y'all to come in and tell me in the comments what y'all think. Because really, some people really be like treating you like you're crazy when you're like, hey, can you not touch my kid? Can you not pick him up? Can you not like be rubbing all over him? Can you not coax him into your apartment? But I'm a nice person. Oh, she's just old. No. To me, that is a no. If I said no, it's no. I do not believe that there is a cap on age. Like people just like age out of weird shit. I, just, I don't think that they age out of perversion. I don't think that they age out of being a sex offender. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I have to calm myself down. I go back upstairs. I talk to Julian and me and David talk to him and 
we were like, you know, we got your back. I was like, next time, baby, don't be afraid to walk away. You don't know what that man could have done to you if he would have gotten mad at you or whatever. Like, you fucking run. You leave that wagon. I don't care about nothing else but your safety. You call me. You call dad. Like, you don't have to sit there and answer questions for nobody. And he was like, mom, you know, I was just really trying to be respectful and I didn't want to give out grandma's personal information and it was just making him even more mad. And so like, I just didn't know what to do. And I hated that my son was in that position. I hated that he was in the position to have to answer to a complete stranger, a man at that by himself and then be told you can't leave until your grandma gets down here and you prove to me who you are. We ended up taking them to Elitch's anyway. I didn't want this situation to ruin the entire day. The kids had a really good time. Everything was all good. Fast forward to 5 a.m. the next morning. And the president of the HOA shows up at my mama's door. And this woman looks at my mom and says, I've been thinking about it all night. I remember why I question people sometimes. The first person that I ever did that to was so-and-so Cruz. And he's um, so-and-so's son, he's the caregiver, but he came into the building following me and did not use his key and that's against protocol. So like, I definitely, I asked him what his name was and who he was and like what he was doing and what his business was here, of course. And then um, the other time was a couple that just kind of looked a little suspicious and it was around the time that some packages were going missing in the front. So I questioned them too. Y'all, my mom is sitting there and she was like, did you just come to my apartment at five in the morning to tell me reasons why you're questioning people in the hallways? I just, I didn't want you to get the wrong idea, like that you question people for no reason. There's no reason to be questioning people like that. And like, if we are not posing a threat, we're not doing anything criminal. We have been properly buzzed in by a person who lives here. We are helping out a person that is, you know, my mom. We should be, we should have the freedom to do that. Um, it's been well over a year. There's no excuse at this point. People jumping into the elevator and, and following us to see where we're going. That's weird and it's too much. In my opinion, that is going overboard. What about us as people makes you feel unsafe? I think that her not being able to answer that question really bugged her and I hope it does. I hope it keeps her up at night. I take solace knowing that my kids have a very strong protector over them that it's not gonna let anything happen to them. That role is so important and so valuable and it is moments like these that we really, really, really need to show our fathers and our father figures in our life some true appreciation and love, especially for Father's Day and just really showing them that we appreciate everything that they do and all of the protection that they provide and just being our backbone and, and being that person to come when we call. Whoever that is for you, make sure that they feel appreciated this Father's Day and give them all the love and all of the appreciation and all of the kudos because that is a special, special place. So thank you to my husband for being such an amazing provider and protector of my family. Um, I plan on celebrating him huge for Father's Day as well as my brother. I hope you guys enjoyed the story, found a message in it. Let me know your thoughts down below, seriously. And also, again, don't forget if you guys are in need of a really good Father's Day gift, definitely consider Fix. Definitely check out my link below. And thank you again to Fix for partnering with me on this story time today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love y'all so, so much. Stay safe on these streets. Have an amazing Father's Day. And let me know your thoughts down below. I love y'all so, so much. And I will see your fine ass in my next video. Peace out, y'all.